face of live TV. Why? The and they went from like, you know, it's a market where it's pretty yeah. even, you know, and all these stations. It's really the only one that hadn't done well was the CBS station. And all of a sudden, they start putting it on Facebook, and everyone starts watching the Facebook Live. And he says the ABC station just went from the middle of the pack to miles ahead of everybody. And he's like, but now, but now we started doing it. But they had that, they were there first, you know, and it's like, it's so convenient that you scroll through your Facebook feed and go, oh, yeah, the news is on there. Oh, hey, the game's on. No, just click play. When we were Boom. first talking about broadcasting, I was talking to a bunch of people on here you know, through a cell phone. And they go, well, it's possible. They, you know, they start speaking technical to me on uh, uh, yeah. that aspect, which I knew nothing about. Yeah. And I was sort of bugged about it, bugged about it. So I set up a thing in the um, office thing. Yeah, it's got some issues, but I, uh, we got to try it. So we listen to it. Way before anybody was streaming. You know, I cell phones were not even... Yeah, so we went over to La Sica and uh, broadcast one of the first ones in the state over California. We didn't lose the last two minutes. I think the game was pretty much out of hand by then anyway. It was just hilarious. Uh, there was no Facebook out there. It was basically just through a website. Well, yeah. we're going to try it. You know, and we were close enough to a tower. And then in the earlier days, you could.
Hi, I'm Steve at American Glass of Fairmont. Uh-ohs happen, and to keep those uh-ohs from becoming oh-nos for quality auto glass chip and repair and replacement, call me at American Glass of Fairmont, where we use quality OEM replacement glass and urethanes. Can't come to us? We'll come to you. Our free mobile service will have your uh-ohs fixed in no time. Here at American Glass, we are a locally owned auto glass repair and replacement company. Free estimates, insurance company approved, American Glass, 815 East Blue Earth Avenue of Fairmont. You've prepared for your financial future, and while your goals haven't changed, the economy has. So where do you go from here? As an Ameriprise Financial Advisor, I can help you identify practical steps to get you back on track. Come in for a complimentary initial review and get a second opinion on your finances. Call us today at 507-238-9722 to schedule your complimentary review. Good vision and healthy eyes are two of your most precious possessions. Associate Optometry will give your eyes the care and attention they deserve. With two optometrists, Dr. Paul Seibert and James Bush, a surgical specialist and a caring staff, Associate Optometry offers comprehensive eye exams and has the latest treatment available no matter what your eye care need is. We offer a large selection of frames in all price ranges. Plus, we feature the latest contact lenses. Associate Optometry in Fairmont and Blue Earth. Quality vision care that's affordable. I'm Dr. Scott Burtis. For over 20 years, Burtis Chiropractic Center has been providing the best in natural health care to the Fairmont area. Whether it is a gentle touch needed in caring for infants with colic or chronic ear infections, school students seeking to improve their performance, senior citizens wanting to maintain their active lifestyle, or we needed the latest in diagnostics to assist in difficult conditions like migraines or fibromyalgia, Burtis Chiropractic Center has what it takes. At Burtis Chiropractic Center, we're here for you. Get healthy, stay healthy. Jason? Before you got on that plane, I had to tell you. Hey, Jason. Good. You need to hear this, too. You got the house. Oh, oh I love oh, this guy. All right. Here's it for you. Thank you. Century 21 agents. Smarter, bolder, faster. See Century 21 Northland Realty for all your real estate needs. The following is based on a true feeling. one you're really good at this and that's what it feels like when there's a century 21 agent in the house smarter bolder faster see century 21 northland realty for all your real estate needs good morning from weather watch hope we've got some sun worshipers out there and today starts our second straight week of record highs not a cloud in sight and temperatures in the triple digits hope you have ap folks because today you're gonna need it Summer's coming. Can your AC handle the heat? Call your local Daikin Comfort Pro before it's too late. Just walking to my car this morning made me feel like an ant under a magnifying glass. Honey, toast is ready. Daikin. Comfort for life. Your local Daikin Comfort Pro is Crest Refrigeration. Call Crest Refrigeration today for all your heating, air conditioning, and indoor air quality needs, or visit us on the web. Be sure to ask about our special financing and rebate offers available now on your new Daikin Comfort System. Hey, and hello again, everybody. It's Cardinal Soccer here on the Gemini Studios Mid-Continent Cable Network. Hey, Tripp here along with Grant Becker, former FHS alum. How you doing tonight, Grant? Doing well, doing well. Great soccer match last night as the girls captured their first win of the season, a 2-1 victory over Mankato, or New Alm, excuse me. The boys come in 0-2. They take on Mankato, Loyola, Lake Crystal Walker Memorial, St. Clair, Crusaders. That's a mouthful. Yes, it is. It's almost like the G-H-E-C-M-L yeah. Truman. Both teams have played games. The Cardinals lost their opener to Worthington 7-0 and lost at New Alm. 
Six nothing. Loyola on the year. All right, this game will be streamed live. Oh and two also. Both teams looking for their first win. In goal for the Cardinals tonight will be Tyson Gertis out there joining him. Will be Darren Thinkstad, a senior, Thomas Havnan, a senior, Jacob Mitchell, number six, a senior, Caleb Hoy, he's number seven, a sophomore. Number eight is Daniel Brumman, a sophomore. Number nine, Malachi Anderson, a junior. Number 10, Matthew Anderson, also a junior. Number 11, Joseph Gherkin, a junior. And number 17, Ryan Henniger, a sophomore. In goal for the Crusaders, Jeremiah Colon, a senior. Loyola, in blue uniforms, gold numbers, white trim. Is that Mr. Cott across the way there? He officiated last night. Uh, I don't believe it is, no. No? Little, little air guy over there. These two teams met last year. Cardinals winning both away and home. They won 3-2 and 6-4 last year. The Cardinals finished 5-12 and overall. And Mankato Loyola did not win a game last year. They were 0-14. Cardinal volleyball team in action tonight. Taking on Martin County West. That one will slide off the sideline and toss in here. Yarley Portillo did the favors there. That one sent way ahead. Thinks that will chase after that. Has it batted away and he'll slide it into the goal. As Curtis boots it away. Tyson Curtis, a sophomore, also the goalie on the hockey team. Got goalie in his blood. Just what he loves. Yeah. Although he can't use a stick here. Just big thick padded gloves. You ever try those gloves on? I did, yeah. They're the thick. They protect you. Really your thumbs are what they've got strong protections on there for. Those balls come in pretty Pretty hard. Tough on your hands. Free kick here for the Cardinals. First home game of the season. That one sent back to the midfield. Knocked down there by the Cardinals. Ben Hernes out there. Number 13. That one intercepted. It'll be a foot race here. And offsides. Just started off one step too far ahead there. Otherwise, that would have been a really dangerous opportunity for Loyola. Free kick here. It'll be thanks, Dad. Darren. Uh, senior. All the way up to Caleb Hoy, number seven there. He tried to send it ahead. Thought maybe it was a handball there. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of shots from the Fairmont players there, but refs gave each other a look and shook their heads. That one will come back to midfield. Knocked down there by Malachi Anderson. Malachi and Matthew, I would suppose, both being juniors, are twin brothers. They are indeed. No Beckers on the roster here, Mr. Grant. Yeah, that's it's been a while. It's odd, isn't it? Yes, it is. The girls have Joni. Grace Higgins scored the game winner last night. All the goals coming in the first half last night as the girls defeated New Alm. That was a, an action-packed game. Three goals in the first half and a, a red card in the second. That's, uh, that's quite a game for you. Yeah. A lot of great defense last night. A lot of physical play in that girls game. Definitely. Yeah, yeah it was a highly contested 
generally clean game, but it was it was very physical. The red card came as a result of Taylor Eicholtz, the Cardinal goalie, had fielded the ball, and the New Orleans player ran into her while she had the ball. Yeah, they protect goalies a little bit like, uh, you know, quarterbacks in the NFL. And a nice stop there. Tyson Gertis got one of those big padded gloves on it. And look at that again. Our State Farm John Corsmo replay coming up here. It's a very nice shot. Good job by Tyson Gertis. Corner, corner kick coming here for Loyola. That one comes out, knocked down by the Cardinals. They'll send it back upfield. Tyson Gertis, a sophomore. Split duties in hockey. Here comes a shot. Curtis, <laughs> once again, diving to his right. He'll give it a boot to midfield. Let's see if we got that one again. Curtis with a couple of stops here early on. Yeah, early action for him. You don't like to have a busy goalie, but been sharp so far. Hernis. Trying to sneak that ball away. And whistle stops. Look at that replay here, your State Farm John Corsmo replay. Hard shot and diving save there by Gertis, his second stop. Yeah, those those low shots to the corners can be pretty dangerous. Goalie's got to go to their side and down to, to make those saves. Call that a worm burner. Hey, Chirp here with Graham Becker and the Gemini crew. Cardinals soccer here at home. First home game for the boys. After being on the road to Worthington and New Alm. Opportunity here for Loyola. Curtis out of the net and he slides in, stops that one. Good job by Curtis. Big save, came out at a tough point and challenged it. It looked like he's gonna wait there for a while, way back, and all of a sudden he made up his mind. Look at this again, your State Farm John Corsmo replay. Comes out of the goal, makes a sliding kick save. He made his, he made his move after uh, Garcia had tapped the ball forward, so forced him to make the decision. And he got there in time to give him absolutely no angle. He was gonna have to go right up and over him and down quick, which is a pretty, pretty tough thing to do, so. Yeah. And he took off after the ball was struck, so he couldn't do anything but chase the ball. And then he got there, like you said, just milliseconds before he could give it a boot. Wall set up in front of the Lioli. Liola. That one headed out of the play there. Over the top of the goal. Armando Garcia again there. Good, dangerous, kind of uncontested header in the box. Can't give up too many free headers like that. That one intercepted, and that'll go off the end line there. Good play there by the Cardinals' Ryan Henniger to the sophomore. Plenty of early pressure here from Mankato Loyola. Good start for them. Yeah, and Cardinals have yet to put a shot on goal on the other end. Corner kick and gets by everybody. Havnan in there trying to scoop it away. He'll chase it towards the sideline here, see if he can get it before it rolls out. He does stop it over there. He's stuck in pretty deep right now for a forward. He shoots it out to midfield. Hoy trying to chase that one. It'll be a toss in for the Cardinals across the way. Caleb, a sophomore. And Caleb Hoy is definitely a uh, 
definitely one of the best dribblers, tight control type players out here for Fairmont. One of the best dribblers on the field today. Already seen a little bit of that in this game. Thirty forty five just underway here in the first half. Forty minute halves. Whistle stops play here. I think Fairmont thought they were gonna get the call for the handball. There's a little little step into the back, I think, from Tom Havden that ends up getting the whistle. The Cardinals can get it down on the other end and give Cologne something to do here. That one intercepted. Portillo chases it up the sideline. Right out front, centering pass, and it'll be booted away. Good clearance there from Anderson. One way up ahead, and Hernis giving chase. Zamora was pretty quick to that one. That one knocked down by Havnan. Cardinal football coming up tomorrow night, or Thursday night, excuse me, against Blue Earth area. The Buccaneers coming to town. We'll be there. Pep Fest tomorrow, that's what it is. In the horseshoe. Yeah, we'll be there too. Gemini's Tail everywhere. Yeah, tail tailgate Thursday night is by Bank Midwest. Pork patties and hot dogs. Gertis looking at a shot here, and Thinkstead, or is Henniger it was that got in the way of that one. Good job there defensively. 28 28 to go. First half, no score here. The girls' games that we've been broadcasting, the scoring's always come within about two minutes left in the half. Yeah. Two minutes after the half has started. You know, that's one of the things they say about soccer. It's most of that scoring is done in the last five minutes of a half, the first five minutes of a half, last five minutes of a game. Those are the times when you're fresh and teams you're seem tired. to be susceptible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a lot of variables at those times, too. And, you know, you see teams make decisions about the kind of result they want at those times. Teams tighten up. You know, you might see one team wants to, they're happy to take the draw, and the other team, they want the win. They gun for it the last two minutes. Things tighten up, and that's when you see a lot of scoring. At the end of a half, one team just says, you know what? There's a boot. And Curtis up to the task. A pretty good rip for, line, for line Portillo right? there. Yeah. 35-foot shot. Hoy being chased here along the sideline. He'll send it ahead, and Jacob Mitchell sends it goalward, and off the fingertips of the goalie, and he slides out there and corrals it. Yeah, smart play to chase that down. Look at this he save here by Tyson Gertis on that line drive left foot boot. He knocks it down, back to live action. Jacob Mitchell, thanks to State Farm John Corsmo for those replays. Boot across the field. Over there is Joseph Gherkin. He'll send it ahead. Havnan given chase here. And that'll be played off the sideline. It'll be a toss in over there for the Cardinals. We have substitutes coming in. Number 18, Campbell Cruzmark, a sophomore for the, the Cardinals. Number 26, Nicholas Flake coming in, a junior for the Crusaders. Peter Redlich is the coach for the Crusaders. Brady Meyer took over for Jeffrey Cott. Actually, I think uh, he took over for Chris Sturdy. Oh, yeah. Chris had a, a spell in there, didn't he? 
Not very long lived, but I think two whistle. or three years in there. Yeah. Whistle stops play here. And I believe the ref is pointing to the penalty spot here. Nope. Goal kick. Goal Could, kick. Couldn't quite tell you. When, yeah. you. when you put the flag up, and it looks like you may be waving down for something else, but ball went out the end line. Center referee couldn't quite see it. It'll be a free kick here for the Crusaders. And that's a good boot. Some 50 yards in the air there. Swing and a miss there by the Crusaders. Brumman scoots it ahead. Daniel Brumman, a sophomore out there. And both tried for a header, couldn't make it. This will be a foot race. Caleb Hoy chases it down. Centers it across. That'll be intercepted by the Crusaders. Just a step behind the man he was looking Think for. Thinkstad drills it into a Crusader. And Gerardo Morales, a sophomore, intercepted it. There's a shot high rising off the top of the crossbar and then Rebound put in the back of the net. Zoom in on that number for me. Follow that guy, Mr. Cameraman. Looks like that goal score may have been 25. I'm gonna listen for the PA here. Usually he does 28. that. 28. Nah, cameraman, he gets that guy for me. <laughs> yeah, it was 28. No, he's he'll get the assist, the number eight. Eight took the shot and then in comes and five Zola. for the rebound. And five for the rebound. No, Armando Garcia? No. No? No, it was 20. 28 get the rebound? Eight took the shot. 26. There we go. Hey, way to point that out. Good camera work there, guy. <laughs> 20 or 28. Maybe we'll have to give that goal in the booth. Nicholas yeah. Flake. I'm, yeah. I'm confident about that now. Yep. Came in for the rebound. Put it away. First shot went right up over the. Goalie, he might have got a, Gertis might have got a hand on it, and deflected it into the crossbar, and it kicked straight down. Loyola was there to put it back in. You got time, John? Look at that one for me. See if you got that right number. We want to credit the right Crusader. Grant's betting on number five, and another chance here, and there's a stole away pass and put in the back of the net. Now that was number eight, he got his goal there. Zola, Matthias Zola. Or was it number three? Scoring the second goal for the Crusaders is number eight, Mathis Yep, and Matthias Zola at the 23-48 mark. Second one, your State Farm John Corzmo replay. Cardinals a little careless with their pass there. Yeah, got to be got to be careful when you're making passes at the back. Zola with the second goal, we're still checking on that first goal for you. Abram Sanchez in there now for the Cardinals as Jacob Mitchell chased after that pass that went off the sideline here. Sanchez send it forward. See the shadow is getting longer. This one will be a long pass. And that one will be struck forward there by Malachi Anderson. You were right, Nicholas Flake with that goal. There's another shot, and that one sails up over the top of the crossbar. Yeah, it came off the shot from Zola, and then the rebound was finished up. And it was yeah. uh, not a particularly easy finish when the ball's yeah, you know, about shin around. height yeah. at, at that weight, you know, and it's coming down. When it bounces off the post like that, it comes down in a funny way. So yeah, you got to work like pretty hard to get your leg over it, your body over it, so you're not just skying it right over the top of the net. He just put it right in the back of the net. Yeah. And then Zola turns right around, gets his goal anyway. <laughs> yeah. Flake with the first goal, 24-38, 23-48. Zola makes it 2-0, Loyola. As the sun setting to our backs here, you see those long shadows on the field. Beautiful night, no wind. Last night we had a slight breeze and then it declined in the 
second half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure how you could get better weather than this, honestly. Without being inside even, yeah. Beautiful night. Flies might be a little bothersome though. <laughs> Here's John there swatting his fly swatter down below. <laughs> you gotta get the pro producer to get you that fan. Yeah, okay, air conditioning, you know, yeah. Coming in for Fairmont, number 21, Max. 21-41 to go here. First half. Substitutes coming in. Toss in here by Habnan in the Hoy. Hoy trying to get past a couple of Crusaders there. I'm going to play it off the inline here and maybe off the sideline. Ah, that'll stay in. Kept in there by Th Thinkstad. Close as it gets. Nice give and go there to Havnan. <laughs> Havnan grabbed the suspenders and wouldn't let go. Yeah, Thinkstad's going to be proud of that little little move there. Not not something you see from a center back too often. He's going to have to tell his friends <laughs> to check it out at the yeah. 20 minute mark, 21 minute mark. High boot. Knocked down there. Max Seafried in there, a sophomore now. Seafried, number 21. That one we played up here. Thinks that intercepts it. He'll dribble through traffic. Centers it ahead, and that'll be knocked down. And he's looking for a hoy there. We just couldn't get it on his foot. That one comes off Sanchez's heel and out of play. Uh, Couple of goals here for Loyola. Throw-in was just taken from three or four feet onto the field. That was not sure what's going on out here. <laughs> not sure how three referees can miss something like that. Like that, right out <laughs> yeah. in front. Or how the player didn't see where he was standing. I think his back foot was on the line. Daniel Brumman now will... Or not Daniel Brumman. Matthias Zola with the goal will take the free kick here. And the wall in front of him. That'll take a hop and Gertis will feel that. Fifth stop there for Gertis. We had a score from Loyola. Girls soccer, eight to three. They pick up their second win of the season. Two and two on the season now. Both these teams today looking for their first win. Both 0-2. Another boot, and that one sails over to the concession stand. He was looking for a little more <laughs> than a goal there. I don't got a hold of that one, that's for sure. That would have been good from 35 yards out. Yeah. <laughs> Number 18 in, Brad Pites, a senior coming in for the Crusaders. 18.43 and counting here. It'll be a free kick from the goal. Cardinal volleyball going on tonight. Header up in the air there. Hoy gets it to Mitchell here. It's a foot race there. Thinks that out of play. And they're going to decide who, which way to go with that one. Up ahead to Hoy. Just a little miscommunication <laughs> there between the main <laughs> oh. forwards. Otherwise, that one could have been pretty dangerous. Yeah. Gertis comes out of the goal and grabs it and kicks it away. Cardinal girls were up 5-1 at the half, and then they ended up winning 8-3. Goals by Hunwitz, Leonard, and Duet in that first half. <laughs> Duet had a hat trick in that game. Abby Duet. I wonder how her sister's doing. Anna, she had a bag of ice on her ankle last night. Corner kick coming here. Knocked down by Loyola. 
Havnan will pick it up. Tosses it ahead there. And that one will be picked off. Got to see the penguin dance last night as the girls got their first win. This one's centered ahead. And what wow. a nice bicycle kick there. Acrobatic defending, and it was necessary. Number 12. Harley Portillo, that was... Boy, if he hadn't got that right, that would have been trouble for his team. And it looked like Hoy. Quite an opportunity for yeah, Hoy. Yeah, he was on the run. Here's a shot, and that'll go off the side of the net. 2 0. Here at the pitch. Coming in for the Cardinals, number five, Bryson Luderman. And number 15, Calvin Guritz. Calvin Guritz, a sophomore coming in, along with another sophomore, Bryson Luderman. Midfielder. Guritz, a midfielder, too. It'll be a free kick here for Sanchez. You got the Cardinals lining up in uh, uh, the, uh, just about the most traditional 4-4-2 you can see. <laughs> yeah. You got the two attackers, one ahead of the other just a little bit there. Yeah, the and then spacing. a straight line four in the midfield and a straight line four at the back. 15-54 and counting. Uh, goals from Flake and Zola. Cardinals got one shot at the Crusader zone. This will be a foot race. Now that the goal comes, and Gertis, he'll scoop it up. And instead of tossing it, he boots it to midfield. Knocked down there by the Crusaders, picked up there by Seafried. And then the Crusaders come away with it. Crossing pass, Sanchez will give it a nice boot ahead. Good left footed clearance. Yeah. To an open player. Right to a man. Yeah, that's, that's ideal. Calvin Gurritz tried to kick it forward, but it rolls off the end line. Let's see that replay here on State Farm. John Corsmo. And it would have been a good pass here to Hoy, but it was intercepted. Oh, quite a play there. Perpendicular to the world there <laughs> and got that foot on it. Yeah, it's tough to position your body right when you're running backwards and the ball comes in quick like that, so. You know who was good at that? Pele. Yeah. There's not a whole lot Pele wasn't good at. <laughs> True. Hoy, who's been pretty active in the Loyola zone, and, he, and he's active again as he does a sliding belly flop here. It's an easy call for the referee when a player gets taken down with a slide tackle and the ball is somewhere else untouched by the tackle. Higgins, also Gracie Higgins, with a couple of goals in that 8-3 win for the Cardinal girls up at Mankato Loyola there. Leonard. 13.40, as you can see on the clock over there. 2-0, the Crusaders with the lead here in the first half. Sanchez hustling back. Another opportunity here for the Crusaders. Crossing pass out front. Gertis at the ready there. And that one a crossing pass. And that one. Whistle stops play. Ref calls a handball there coming off the attacker's hand after it bounced up from the the slide tackle. So Sanchez will take the free kick here at the 13 minute mark. Hey, you're watching Cardinal Soccer here. Boys Soccer on the Gemini Studios Midcontinent Cable Network. Live around the world on the web. Tape delay on Midcontinent Channel 20 and we got a timeout on the field. Hey, some proud supporters of Cardinal Youth Activities include Culligan Water, step down and see Rich. Hey, you can get water down there on the side of the building 24-7 now. Also, Olson Reynolds, Bowmore Lanes, do a little carpet and paint. And they got a paint sale going on for Labor Day. First Farmers and Merchants Bank, AOK Plumbing Heating, Bank Midwest, Fairmont Photo Press, Fairmont Body Shop. Crest Refrigeration, Farm Bureau Insurance, Dave Hewsett, your agent there. 
Burtis Chiropractic, Fairmont Family Dentistry, Richard's Auto Repair and Towing. Stop down and see Betty and Richard for all your vehicle and service needs. Status Installation, Thriving Financial, Scott Foreman, your agent there. Tate Street Service, Case IH, Rabe International. Stop out and see Johnny Uth out for all your farm equipment. And don't forget about the Fairmont Body Shop and our broadcast partner tonight, Graham Tire. Thanks a lot, Davey Cohn. Loose ball, and Gertis will signal that he's got it. Cardinal Volleyball taking on Martin County West tonight. wonder if the... Uh, Brookens guy is at the volleyball match tonight. He likes to tweet a lot. He goes wherever he can. Sanchez will chase it down and he'll play it here to the near side. Thinks that hustling back there. And they'll boot it back to Gertis and he'll send a line drive up. He was looking for Luderman there and just went There's a long so shot. Good for three points right there. Yeah. Perfectly Port executed field goal. Portillo. I imagine most high school football teams would like to have somebody who can yeah. kick the ball through the uprights from that far out. Cardinal fans, do you need some good news? Fairmont girls beat Loyola 8-3 to three tonight. Sanchez will hit the free kick here. And that'll come right to the Crusaders. Zola, he with a goal. Thinkston, Thinkstad knocks down the give and go there, and that one will go all the way back to Tyson Gertis, the sophomore goalie. I wonder if those are the same goalie clothes Brooke Hunwertson wore that had that same. I wonder if they order the, uh, <laughs> the same goalie kits for both teams. Yeah. That, that shady green. You don't see too many teams. green. Yeah, you don't see too many teams around the area wearing that color, so yeah. it's a pretty safe pick because. Really all you're looking for is a kit that you can wear that you're never gonna have to change. Every other team is not gonna wear that. See so much red and blue down here, a little purple. Helps the referees know who the goalie is. Yeah, I think when we played, Matt Tennyson wore a, I think he wore like a peach colored yeah. kit. I, I can't remember now. He might've had a green one too. He, he, had a, he had a couple little uniforms he liked to wear. Yeah, it might've been gray. Oh, Gertis and the rebound rejected up over the top of the goal. I don't think Gertis uh, thought that first one was going to get through the play. I yeah. think he thought it was going right over the net, and then it came down to the last second. He got his hands up just in time. It was number 12, Portillo, who had an opportunity. We're going to see if we rack that one up again. Here's State Farm, John Corsmo replay. That one just did a little hop and it hit the crossbar and then came back down. And I think it was 18 there, Brad Peach. And Portillo says, ah, how could I miss so close? 2 0. Crusaders with goals at the 24 38, 23 48, marked by Flake and Nicholas Flake and Matthias Zola. And Great rip there from Zola. That one. Chipped the paint off the side of the goalpost. Thanks, Dad. Uh, working behind the goal. That one sent it out front. That's off a Cardinal defender. And somebody's got to get that ball out of there. And a swing and a miss there. Turning a fire, and that hits a defender. Gherkin got his backside on that one, and that'll roll off the inline. He just gets knocked down at the last second there. So if the Crusader player hits it off a Cardinal and it goes out of play, it would be a Crusader ball? Yeah, it'd be a corner kick, yeah. That yeah, one. just just who it touches last is all that matters. Not who struck it last. Right. Let's change it. Yeah. <laughs> reward that defender. The reward is it's not a goal. <laughs> true, true, or a pass to make right, a goal. Right, right. Yeah, most teams will live with the corner. You know, corner kicks. They're uh, they're something that seems dangerous, but. If you organize well defensively to stop them, you'll almost never see a corner kick goal. It's uh, one of those misconceptions about soccer is that free kicks and corner kicks, just set pieces in general, people tend to think they're a little bit more dangerous than they are. The conversion rate uh, and chances from, from set pieces is really, really low. 
But uh, conversion rates from open play are much higher, really, when you get a decent chance from inside the box. It's a heck of a lot better than anything other than a penalty, penalty kick, really. Eight minutes to play here in the first half. The Crusaders with the lead. Cardinals 0-2 on the season. Lost 7-0 to Worthington and 6-0 to New Alm. Loyola lost to New Alm 6-1, and they lost to Worthington 10-4. So both teams playing the same opponents, both coming up 0-2. Brumman will send it across field. Thinkstad sends it ahead. Mitchell giving chase, and Colon comes out of the goal. And Jeremiah, he sends it way upfield. This is going to be a foot race. Sanchez, and he's going to be outraced there by the Loyola player. Here's a point blank shot, and that gets by the Cardinal goalie. Zola continues to be the standout player on the field out here. That was a really, really impressive display there. If I was him, I would have gone down after I got <laughs> bumped into, after I got tripped there. Yeah, he kept Just the take head. the penalty kick. He got by Sanchez right here. And made a nice move. Good dribble around. Another nice move. And then just by the diving Gertis. Used the, uh, the knowledge that most high school defenders are going to let you get onto your left foot if, if you want it because... Not a lot of high school players are great with both feet, so he said, I'm going to fake this shot to the right, take my space to the left. I guess if he had gone down when he got tripped there, it wouldn't quite have been a penalty kick. It would have been a direct free kick. Right. So it's a better opportunity just to stay up and go for it. So Zola has a pair of goals, and it makes it 3-0. Whistle stops play here. He, was, uh, he took that original shot on the first Loyola goal, too, so he was uh, about an inch away from uh, having uh, a hat, hat trick, trick already. already. Mitchell giving chase here. And that one will be on the end line. Mitchell tried to keep it in, and we'll have a corner kick here. Havnon will take this one. Well, well now the Cardinals have we're a gonna chance prove to you wrong make me here. look dumb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're going to prove you wrong here. Right on well, this My first thought is <laughs> yeah. minutes after I say yeah. corner kicks aren't a great I, opportunity. Here I comes think one. I, I think I was a millisecond ahead of you on this yeah. corner kick. Let's do it. Hi. That one's headed out of there by the goalie, Colon, and he comes down on his leg, and he's injured. He went way up there to get that header. As play continues, somebody's going to have to step in goal, and then Hoy, he gets leveled as the whistle will stop play here, I'm sure. I don't think as the Cardinals quite knew that the goalkeeper was down like that. He, he definitely is not doing all right. I don't know if he landed on somebody's yeah. ankle when he came down. 3-0. We'll take a break here. Hey, some other proud supporters of Cardinal Youth Activities include Slumberland, Beamer Construction, Militel Motors, American Glass, Fairmont Ford, Associate Autometry, Lawn Solutions, Lund Chiropractic, Hometown Sanitation, the Ranch Family Restaurant. Don't forget about that 40-item salad bar. Also, State Farm Insurance, John Corsmo, your agent there. U.S. Bank, Jake's Pizza, stop in before or after the game. DeWar Electric, Gemini Studios, Peterson Anthony Insurance, the Visual Identity Vault, the Squeegee Brothers, Frontier Communications, Dan's Appliance, Duderstad Video, Lakeview Funeral Home, Dave Plumbing, Century 21, also Johnson Barron's Wilson's Law Firm, Midwest Audio Video, and FairmontSports.com, State Bank of Fairmont, also the Fairmont Booster Club, and our broadcast partner tonight, Graham Tire. Thanks a lot, Davy Cohen. Stop down and see those guys, Dale, Malcolm, for all your tire needs and your service, oil changes. And we don't want to forget about Case IH and Fairmont Body Shop. Hey, if you're looking for Cardinal Athletic v events on the web, check out Gemini Studios MN.com. We got some archived video there from previous contests. Also, the schedule of events is on that site. 5.59 to play here as the goalie gets up. And we'll have a new goalkeeper for the Crusaders. And Cody Pithen, a freshman, is listed as a goalie. You never yeah. like to see a goalie go down, especially when there's a big group of people in there. The other goalie is jumping up. Armando Zamora, who's an eighth grader. Let's see if we can catch a name from a Loyola player. This guy keeping stats. 
Hey, stat guy. Hey, stat guy. Viola. And now you've got a couple Cardinals lining up over the ball, trying to decide who's going to take this, what they're going to do with this. They've had some time to think about what they're going to do with this set piece. Tom Havnan and Caleb Hoy standing over it, and it looks like it's going to be Havnan. That's a, a classic, classic soccer right there. A couple of, couple of forwards thinking that they can be the one to take it. Everybody wants to take these free kicks. Joseph Cullen comes in the goal here. Free kick, a wall of four Crusaders in front of Havnan. He'll let it fly. That one knocked down. He'll get it back. Cardinals got the ball on this end. Let's keep it here a while, huh? Yeah, that's really, I mean, that's the best way to fight your way back into a game like this is just sustained pressure. But yeah. Loyola's been doing the exact opposite. They've, they've been the ones with the sustained pressure so far. That's why they're up 3 0 right now. Havnan will send it ahead looking for Hoy here. Or Mitchell, it is. Yeah. Jacob, number six. Tried to get it back to Thinkstead. That one picked off. Got a give and go here coming. 26 is Nicholas Flake. He has a goal. And Sanchez. And the ref looks like he's going to go to the book here for a yellow card. Uh -huh. Take a guy out in a full sprint. That clearly, it's going to be a. Uh, it's going to be a yellow just about every time. How about that? Two cards and back-to-back nights. -back yeah. You don't see cards of any color usually out here, but yeah. he forced the ref's hand there, no doubt about it. So it's Sanchez. And both were at full speed there. And a little bump while you're running. Good to see that nobody was injured on that play. Zamora will come in here for the Crusaders. So if Sanchez gets another yellow card, Grant? He's gone. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't come back in. I think uh, the high school league has different rules about how the suspensions work. With so They call it a soft yellow when you go in with two yellow cards. And a, and a, or a soft red, sorry, and a hard red when you get it straight up. No, no yellow cards to do it, just a straight to the red card. I've actually seen a situation where a player previously had a yellow card and then committed a direct red offense. So he already had one yellow card, but he still got the hard red anyway. And, uh, that that results in a different kind of suspension than a more than two the, yellows the, do. The game, yeah. So if I'm not sure if I'm not sure that a, I think a soft red in the state high school league, yeah. I believe, is not, a is not a suspension. Shot up over the top of the crossbar. So if you get a red card, are you suspended from the next game? I believe uh, a, a hard red suspends you from at least one game, if not more. They, I mean, I get so confused, though, about which different right. leagues have these yep. rules. And having, college, covered, having covered college, college soccer and, and being school. a fan of MLS and being a fan of the English Premier League, that's the one I can tell you for sure. They get three <laughs> games for a hard red, <laughs> one for a soft. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the high school league rule is anymore. Their hard red is a little more physical than the yeah, high school. Yeah, they, they tend, to be, uh, <laughs> yeah. tend to be pretty serious challenges. Or uh -huh. uh, or you see some, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Luis yeah. Suarez has a history of biting people, you know, so he's, he's got red cards for that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. you, you see every once in a while you see a guy spit at somebody, and that, that tends to be a red card. You so. sure that ain't WWF? <laughs> you sometimes wonder, yeah. yeah I mean, WWE. There was a time where they, you know, after the third time that he bit a guy, they talked about is this going to be a lifetime ban for him? And, and what is it about this guy that he's decided to bite people? Yeah. Part vampire. What kind of grown man bites people? Right out front, and that slides by. Waiting on the side there was Gerardo Morales, and he had an opportunity to make it 4 0. 322 and counting here in the first half. Curtis will give her a boot here. He'll play it into the corner. Well, we had biting and boxing, wasn't it? Tyson bit yeah. his ear off, and yeah. Holyfield's ear gone. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, it's uh, it's bizarre. He just, I think it was like, it's happened three times to him. He did it once when he was playing in, in the Netherlands. I think he did it yeah. once when he was playing for his for Uruguay, and then another time when he was playing for Liverpool. But he's just an unbelievable scorer. So he ended up 
Barcelona shelled out some crazy <laughs> amount of money to bring him over, even though he was on a six-month ban from his third national television, international television bite. Yeah. It's just a very, uh, very bizarre thing. I and think uh, I remember Danny Ainge, the Boston Celtics in basketball, biting Tree Rollins, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think uh, Ainge uh, still says he didn't do it. Yeah, he's under a pile. Maintains innocence. Uh, yeah, pile of here comes the boot, Gerdes up in the air, fields it in the air. Another stop for the sophomore goalkeeper. Six of them unofficially. Two to play, cards trail here, 3-0. Knocked down by Brumman, he gives chase. Chris Hader's got the Cardinals back on their heels a little bit here. Number 20, Roman Rozvaf. A junior, and that one will go off the sideline. It'll be a toss in here for the Cardinals. The referee was waving his flag. I think he might have been calling a foul there. Make it he, a little free kick here yeah, for the Cardinals. Yeah, he changed it from one hand to the other there and got caught. A free kick coming. And talking about goals in the last two minutes of a half. Fairmont could really use one here to Certainly get could. themselves back into it. Otherwise, they're staring down and not the let of a 3 nothing lead. And not let a blue one come in right here. Gertis down on the ground. What a stop there. Morales yes. Morales just about got a piece of that one, and Gertis would have been in trouble then. He dove the right way to save it. Good play there. Has one minute to go here in the first half. Your State Farm John Corsmo replay. Good job. Watch Gertis, he cuts off that angle. <laughs> it was almost tipped in there as Gerardo Morales, number three, came sliding in. If he had got a foot on it, it would have been trouble. This one up ahead to Hoy, and plays it off his chest with a half a minute to go. Whistle will stop play here. Yeah, and last night we talked about those balls over the top when you can dink them in there and get them to stop before the goalie. That's a, those are the kinds of dangerous balls you want to be putting in. That was perfect execution from Anderson, and just a bouncing ball was tough for Hoy to bring it down and get on the run with it. But he was he had four loyal defenders around him too, so it wasn't going to be easy. But those are the kinds of balls Fairmont's been looking for the whole half. Time winding down here, just five seconds yeah, left. Yeah, five seconds. We're not even get to. Yeah, we do get this free kick away, and that's going to sound the horn here at Jeffrey Cott Soccer Fields. And, uh, Cardinals trail the Loyola Crusaders 3-0. Hey, Chirp here along with FHS alum Grant Becker. Stay tuned. We'll be back with the second half. This summer, don't send a fan to do an air conditioner's job. Call your local Daikin Comfort Pro before it's too late. Daikin. Comfort for life. Your local Daikin Comfort Pro is Crest Refrigeration. Call Crest Refrigeration today for all your heating, air conditioning, and indoor air quality needs, or visit us on the web. Be sure to ask about our special financing and rebate offers available now on your new Daikin Comfort System. Discover clean, pure, great-tasting water for your home or business with Culligan Water. Our water softening systems eliminate the materials in hard water, including calcium and magnesium, as well as microscopic impurities and chemical elements. Whether you choose a softener, reverse osmosis system, water cooler, or any of our other innovative products, you'll receive many great benefits. Your ice cubes will be clearer, and all of your favorite beverages will taste better. Culligan Water does more than just provide clean drinking water. Softened water means cleaner bathrooms, kitchens, dishes, and laundry. You'll also notice improvements in the appearance of your skin and hair. Culligan can save you money, too. 
With a Culligan water softener, you'll use less salt, water, and electricity, which can reduce your water heating bills by up to 29%. Call today for a free water analysis from your Culligan man. Mohawk Flooring is your total flooring resource, and Doolittle's Carpet and Paints is your total floor store. Mohawk Smart Strand Silk is the only luxuriously soft carpet with built-in lifetime stain resistance that will never wear or wash off. Mohawk Hardwood protected by Armor Max with Scotchgard Advanced Repel Technology. Beautiful on the inside, tough on the outside. Cover your spaces with Mohawk Flooring, your total flooring resource. Visit Doolittle's Carpet and Paints today. See our new showroom for the finest selection of carpet and floor. Locally owned and operated, Fairmont Body Shop is your go-to full-service auto body shop. Our professionals will have your car restored to pre-accident condition and back on the road in no time. Our goal is to create a hassle-free experience for you. Services include paint and complete auto body collision repair. At Fairmont Body Shop, our main concern is safety and quality results. If you're in an accident, make sure you work with a body shop you can trust. Call or stop in today for your free estimate. Fairmont Body Shop, your collision repair experts. At Farm Bureau, when we talk about protecting what matters most, we're not just talking about things with walls and things with wheels. We're talking about people, your family. Everything that's important to you is important to us. That's why our agents are ready to help protect your future and give you peace of mind today. Visit us online or just stop by to see how Farm Bureau agents make insurance simple. In Fairmont, Minnesota, contact David Husset to see how he makes insurance simple. Fairmont Ford believes in good old-fashioned customer service, value pricing on all of our products and services, coupled with modern facilities and a trained staff with 433 years of experience. This makes for the best customer service experience around. We are here to serve you, whether you are in the market for a new or used vehicle, need service on your vehicle, a new set of tires, or in need of a great body shop. We look forward to serving you just like we have for over 100 years. Fairmont Ford is here six days a week for your convenience, and we do it all big or small. Fairmont Ford proudly supports area youth events. Frontier gives you a two-year price guarantee on internet. And now for a limited time, you'll also get a $200 Amazon.com gift card when you switch to Frontier. It's just another reason to love the provider that also gives you a free Wi-Fi modem. The choice is easy. Get Frontier high-speed internet now for $19.99 per month with qualifying phone service and two-year agreement. Plus, get a $200 Amazon.com gift card. What are you waiting for? This offer won't last. Switch today. Bring your video project into focus at Gemini Studios in downtown Fairmont. Whether it's a training video for your company or a promotional DVD for your organization, Gemini Studios has the knowledge and experience to create a professional video presentation. The helpful staff will listen to your needs and work with you to produce a DVD that will effectively reach your target audience. Gemini Studios offers a wide range of services, from video transfer to creative training and promotional DVDs. Let Gemini Studios bring your video project into focus. Hi, I'm Brad Cohn, manager of Graham Tire in Fairmont. At Graham Tire, we want to earn your business. If you're looking for a great new stereo for your car, truck, or recreational vehicle, a home theater system and TV to enjoy with the family, or maybe a remote starter for the chilly winter months, Midwest Audio Video of Fairmont is here to meet your personal, home, or commercial needs. We're sure to have what you need or do our best to get it for you. Enjoy the helpful, friendly customer service you come to expect and the knowledgeable experience, sales, installation, and service you deserve. Adam at Midwest Audio Video can hook you up with what you need. Olson Rentals is your equipment and party rental headquarters. Whether you need to rent earth moving equipment or a party tent, Olson's has just what you need. In the market to buy instead of rent, Olson Rentals also sells name brand equipment by Dixon, Honda, Husqvarna, Alcoda, and Broilmaster. Olson's has also expanded their products and services to include small engine repair. Stop in today and let Olson's knowledgeable, friendly staff help you with all your rental, retail, and small engine repair needs. Thank you. 
We have a rich community heritage here in southern Minnesota and northern Iowa. It's the people, our family, friends, and neighbors who help make our community what it is. Peterson Anthony Insurance has been a part of this community for nearly 100 years, building strong relationships with our customers and protecting what's most important to you. We're invested in our community. We're invested in you. Peterson Anthony Insurance, your possessions, your protection, our business. I think I'll take my favorite doll to my favorite place. Uh, let me give her a call. When you're feeling hungry and you want to eat, let me tell you about the place that can't be beat. You can have it cold, you can have it hot. You get it piled high, but you don't pay a lot. Oh, baby, when you give us a try, you're bound to see why you'll always come back. The Ranch Restaurant, 1330 North State Street on Highway 15. Hello, Richards? Help! If your vehicle won't go, call Richards for a tow. We offer 24-hour towing service with wheel lift and flatbed trucks. In need of repair, Richards has skilled mechanics and an excellent service facility to handle all your car repair needs. Quick, convenient, reliable. Richards will get you back on the road fast. Richards Auto Repair and Towing, 410 East Blue Earth Avenue, Fairmont. Stop watching your money fly out the roof, windows, and walls of your home or business. Satis Insulation can handle any job, large or small. Stops the money drain with high quality R-value spray and foam insulation. Factory trained and certified, Satis Insulation specializes in ag buildings and new construction and remodeling projects. Call Satis Insulation for a free estimate today and start saving money tomorrow. Satis Insulation, the better choice in insulation. Squeegee Brothers of Southern Minnesota has been cleaning windows for decades. If you haven't hired us yet, let me give you three good reasons why you should. Most accidents occur around the home. Let us safely clean your windows for you. Your time is valuable, so let Squeegee Brothers have your windows cleaned before you get home from work. Sparkling clean windows magnify the beauty of your home. Call Squeegee Brothers today for your free estimate. Since 1977, Tate's Tree Service has been offering complete professional tree care services for commercial, residential, and agricultural properties. With an ISA certified arborist on staff, Tate's Tree Service offers risk assessment and management strategies, crane assisted tree removal, lot and land clearing, pruning, and stump removal. They have the best equipment and expertise to get the job done quickly and safely. Tate's thanks to Southern Minnesota and Northern Iowa communities they have proudly served since 1977. Why not give them a call today? You believe faith and finances go together, and so do we. At Thrivent Financial, we know you have goals and that your values guide your decisions. We can help you make wise money choices with products, services, and financial strategies based on your needs. And as a Thrivent member, you have the chance to strengthen where you live, work, and worship. Ask your local Thrivent Financial representative how you can connect your faith and finances for good. Hey, welcome back to Jeffrey Cott Soccer Fields here in Fairmont, Minnesota. Hey, Trippy, along with Grant Becker, where the Cardinal Boys Soccer Team trails the Loyola, Loyola Crusaders 3 0. Goals coming in in that first half at the 24 38 mark. Nicholas Flake, Jr., got one past the Cardinal goalie. Then he, that was the one on the rebound. Yeah. He hit the yeah. crossbar. Crossbar shot from Zola. Ripped one right off. It went bar down. and So Zola come back and got his own goal at 23-48. And uh, make matters work for the Cardinals, he picked up another one at 7.09. They flip-flop sides here. The Cardinals in the white. Top jerseys, Cardinal red trunks. Loyola. Blue and gold. Man, Cato Loyola combined with Lake Crystal Walk Memorial and St. Clair. A cooperative. Yeah, I believe Mankato Loyola didn't have a program for a couple years there for soccer, boys' soccer. They went yeah. a little while without a team. 
It's good to see them back out here having a team and competing once again. Sanchez, who got a yellow card in that first half, gives it a boot here. Him and another player from the Crusaders were running side by side down the field and they were blocking each other and Sanchez lifted the Crusader off his feet, drawing the yellow card. And then the other night in the girls game, we seen a red card as the Cardinal goalie, Taylor Eicholtz, fielded the ball and then the New Orleans player rushed into her, drawing the red card. Thinks that out there along with Abram Sanchez, number four, out there also. Joseph Gherkin, number 11, right there. Daniel Brumman taking that one off the chest. Number 10 is Matthew Anderson. 17 out there is Ryan Henniger. Number seven, Caleb Hoy. Number three, Thomas Habden. Be nice to get a quick goal right here, Grant. Yeah, that would be huge. I uh, I remember a time my junior year where we were playing in a, a little tournament over in Albert Lee. They used to play a four-team little bracket, get two two games in in one day. We were in the championship game against Albert Lee, and we got down 4-0 to zero at halftime. And uh, I think that was the maddest I've ever seen head coach <laughs> Jeff Cott. Never, he was never a yeller, never a yeller. Right. But uh, he, we had a locker room because we were playing on the football field. He came in, threw down his clipboard, and yelled at us. And uh, kind of got the guys woke back up, and we went out there, and we said, well, look, okay, down four goals. we got to score a goal every ten minutes, and we really got to get one early. Came back out and scored one in two minutes, and then every ten minutes went into overtime and won at 5-4. Just little by little, got to chip away. It's not that's not impossible, but you got to get that uh, first one. that first bit of hope. That's uh, the breakthrough you really need, and then you can develop some momentum. Jeremiah Cologne, who was injured there in the first half, and goal for the Crusaders back out here for the second half. Good to see that he's not hurt. He didn't have very many stops to shot or stops from Cardinal shots. A couple of Tyson Gertis, the sophomore goalie for the Cardinals, been busy. He had six or seven stops in that first half. And a couple of unfortunate hops off the crossbar, too. Zola could have had the hat trick. Here come the Crusaders again. That one knocked away. Good play there by Ben Hernis. He gives chase here. Ben, a tennis player also. This one will come up the sideline, stay in. Sanchez tiptoes it out of bounds. Head coach for the Crusaders, Peter Redlich, the head coach for the Cardinals, Brady Meyer, assisted by Chris Johnson, and also Matt Tennyson, a FHS Bonavista goalie. Havnan giving chase. Crusaders pick it off first. Yeah, Matt's a, he was an all-around good player, too, when he arrived at Buena Vista. And they, uh, they already had a starting varsity goalie, and he was the backup varsity goalie, but they also used him uh, out as a winger for the JV team. He was starting games and was one of the star forwards for the, the junior varsity team. Despite his position being goalie, he hadn't played winger in like three years. Now he's bringing that, uh, bringing that knowledge. Was he a great ahead of you? No, no, he was yeah. my age. We you played together, yeah. We came age? up together. Yeah. Started, you know, playing together back when we were on the green teams and the blue teams and U6, and then mm -hmm. joined forces for U12 and together played together ever since. Some good ball handling by Brumman, and then he gets rewarded by being knocked down. Yeah, and that's what you... When you're playing in midfield and you can dribble a lot, you get taken down sometimes. That's the, the cost of having... Yeah. Good foot skills, but uh, you know, being able to draw a foul is a pretty important skill in soccer. Thinks Referee's that. trying to yeah, signal stop over the, the clock here. Yeah. Thirty-five minute mark. Hey, that'll give us time to call in for some pizza. Trying to at talk the pizza to somebody range. here. Yeah. Sideline ref says he wants to talk to the Let's see what's the head going ref. On I think he's here. gonna come over and talk to these players. They're standing a little close to the line. And yeah. Oh, he's telling the players that they're standing so close to the field, their uniforms are confusing him with the players on the field. He wants them to stand back a little I bit. I see. Just so there's no confusion. The Mankato Loyola Junior Varsity team Special trying to cheer on their varsity players. Yep. Hey, Joshua, 
Mark Sharp here from the Gemini crew out at the soccer field. We're going to put you on the air, okay? Alrighty. <laughs> hey, we'd like to order a pizza. Alrighty, what's this pizza you look for? Oh, uh, how about a large thin crust supreme? Alrighty, anything else or just that pizza for you today? Yeah, pizza, and then throw a couple packets of hot peppers and cheese packets and maybe some napkins. Napkins as well, you got it. Yeah. Could I get a phone number? 235-5190 is the Gemini studio line. You got it. I'll out there to the soccer field as soon as possible for you, about 35 minutes on the way. Hey, thanks, Josh. Say hi yeah. to the folks, will you? Will do. Have a nice night. No, say hi to the people here. Hello, okay, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Joshua at the Pizza Ranch. Thanks. You, you got it. Have a nice evening. Yeah, bye. I think he misunderstood me when I said say <laughs> hi to the folks. Yeah, I don't I, know his folks. But <laughs> I, I met the folks here watching the game and listening live on the web and Gemini Studios, MN.com. But he could say hi to his folks for me, too. You know, I, I got a suspicion that he's not going to do that. <laughs> I do, too. As long as he remembers the hot peppers for the pizza. Bruce loves those. <laughs> and that'll... Yeah, That'll make you sound like Curly of the Three Stooges. <laughs> here come the Crusaders. <laughs> Opportunity here and a high shot and Gertis. Tips it back over the top of the net. Big important save there from Gertis. He's had a lot of work to do tonight. That one started again with Zola. He's just been really the standout player on the field tonight. He is strong on the ball, strong off the ball, good passes, Look good shots. Here. He's been... State Farm, John Corzimo. We'll make it the Cabers really Realty replays. Susie Corzimo there. Watch this play. Nice play there by Tyson Gertis. Corner kick coming. Opportunity for the Crusaders right out front. And that headed out of the goal box there by the Cardinals. Up to Hoy. He's been active tonight. Caleb Hoy. A sophomore. Cardinals looking for their first win and their first goal tonight here in this game. Cardinal girls volleyball in action. I haven't seen nothing on Twitter or from the beloved. She's down there keeping book and clock. Maybe she would shoot me a text. They're playing Martin County West tonight. Tomorrow there's a Pep Fest at the Horseshoe. They usually have some food down there too. Introduce all the fall sports teams, girls and boys soccer, Cardinal girls and boys cross country teams. Also the football team and the girls tennis team. Did I forget anybody? I don't think so. Soccer, cross country, football, tennis. Volleyball. Volleyball. Dance teams during the winter. They have a dance team now? They got a dance team now. How about yep. that? Lauren Carlson, you remember her? I do. She kind of was active in getting it started. and well, that's great. And uh, instead of playing hockey, she went out for the dance team. They performed at half times of... Uh, some of the Cardinal basketball games. They have a state tournament for that too. Yeah. Yeah, they have. I know a lot of those schools in the Twin Cities have big, big dance teams. It's a pretty big competition. Well choreographed. Cardinals trailing here. The Crusaders on top, 3 0. Goals coming from Nicholas Flake. And a pair of goals from Matthias Zola, a, a senior, Flake, a junior. Geez, I didn't tell that guy what time to deliver that pizza. I suppose it'll be here in 30 minutes. Should I call him back? 35. Well, we got 40 minute half. I might get here. And good play here. Number four taking that ball, Ramiro Zamora. A freshman out there, number four. He's been real sharp tonight, too. Uh, Fast player, strong on the ball, and not letting anything get by him defensively, getting involved offensively. Brahman sweeps that one away. 
And then the Crusaders send it back in the Cardinal zone here. Seen some acrobatics here by the Crusader players. And that one off Sanchez. See if he can save it from going out of play. He does. Up the head to Havnan. He'll wait for it to catch up to him and then sprint down the sideline here. He has it kicked away and it's out of play. Well, they're going to play on here. Ref, ref's got his flag up. That one went out of bounds. Yeah, He's going to keep it up, trying to yell at the center referee. Yeah. And so if we get a goal, it won't count. Here's Hoy giving chase. And well, Kalan. Should, still going to be a Fairmont ball. It's going to come back when the ref eventually sees the flag up. Oh, no, he's going to wave gonna, it off. He's just going to say, <laughs> all right, well, play on. That's odd. We don't have to stop this one. Opportunity here for the Crusaders up ahead to Zola. And he's out ahead and he gets a shirt tucked in the behind. He's going to line it up and he beats the goalie. And there's the hat trick for Zola. 29-13. Here in the second half. A real masterclass from him tonight. Just far and away the best player on the field. Fights off challenges from Sanchez and from Thingstead. Thingstead gets a little tug of the jersey, pulls arm a little bit, <laughs> and then he just rips it quick. And, and it's led by the Cardinal goaltender. 29-13, Zola with the hat trick here tonight. And if you're Tyson Curtis, that's, that's about as tough to stop as anything that's come towards him tonight, especially because he's got a defender in his way, can't see when that ball's going to be released, and it was just, I mean, he hit it quick. Didn't look like he was lining up for a shot at all, and all of a sudden it's in the back of the net. He also had a, had a little hook on it, just yep. enough, too. Oh, yeah, I mean, he went against the grain with it. I mean, that's yeah. just well executed from Zola, who has earned this hat trick tonight. 4-0, cards trail here. Both teams 0-2 on the season. The Cardinals got the best of the Crusaders last year, 3-2 and 6-4. But they find themselves in a hole here, 4 0. 28.55 to go. The opportunity here. What footwork. And another hard shot off of Gertis, and the rebound put in by Morales. Back to back goals here within a minute. <laughs> Morales. And Zola uh, will get an assist. Here. Referee's going to run over here and have a little chat. It looks like the sideline referee might be calling offside, offside on that rebound. It's hard to tell when uh, yeah. when that shot comes off. It depends on where the Let's following see. player is. Where were the following player? Is he player? in front of the ball? Yeah. Very tight it. call. Yeah. So they're going to wave it away. There goes any partiality bring it up from the PA announcer. Yeah, bring it up again, John, as we'll look at this again, this Cavers Realty, Susie Corsmo replay. It's tough angle for us from, from here, but right. you know it's close. Watch so. for the far side. What matters here is when the ball comes off of Zola's foot right there. Where Morales was. Darn close. And it, and it depends on the Fairmont defenders all put their arms up for offside right away. Like I said, from, from our angle, it's almost impossible to tell. You know he's right there. Well, but one clue was the play, Fairmont players right. putting well, it up. Well, in all of them, you know, five at a time really uh, quickly. You, you know, usually you see one of them do it, and then the bunch, the rest go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about that sounds like a good idea. Let's, let's call an let's, offside. Let's sell this call, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think uh, when you get that many do it in unison, it, it yeah. may just have been. And the only person out here who had a good view of it was the referee. He made the call. Down here on the sidelines. Yep. So, so wave the goal away. It's 4-0 yet. Yeah. That one. Hoy chasing after it. Him and Zamora fighting for that ball, and that'll play off the sideline. Hey, some proud supporters of Cardinal Youth Activities include AOK Plumbing Heating, Bank Midwest, Fairmont Photo Press, Fairmont Body Shop, Richard's Auto Repair and Towing, Saddest Insulation, and here comes Zamora again. You can tell what he did all summer. Another nice move, and he's knocked off the ball. Whistle, uh, stop play. I'm and very confused as to how this is playing here. on. Here's a loose ball out in front. Gerdeson, they're going to call that one, except for he was offside that time. So 
Yeah. This looks like a, a I, no I think this is your classic makeup call right here. <laughs> it could be. Sideline referee, though, flagged for a penalty on, on the first challenge, the initial challenge when Sanchez took him down in the box. And yeah, we got the which cross arms I would have thought may have been a, uh, a, a chance at a second yellow there when you take a guy down from behind in the box when he's got a clear opportunity to score there. And Gertis pleading his case, and both players tap gloves there, or hands. So see what it's going to be a free kick. Wow. I, the, I, uh, Zamora ran into Gertis, who was trying to feel that ball that popped up in the air. Yeah. And we're going to have a free kick. They're going to give this one to Fairman. I think maybe they're, I guess, probably calling the offsides. That was, I mean, Zola was still, he was down on the ground in an offside position after having been taken down. Uh, Fairmont, <laughs> they're going to fortunate here. Uh, could have been a penalty kick. Very too. easily could have been a penalty kick and perhaps even another yellow card for Sanchez. But on they play, still 4-0. Ignore the scoreboard over there. Yeah, our graphic. We got the <laughs> yeah. the official score. Yeah, it's odd. There's been some some real confusion between the center referee here tonight and the sideline referee. It can be tough. You know, you see a lot of you know re referee crews at the higher level, and even on occasion at the high school level where they have. A, you know, microphone system where they can right, talk to each that's other. What I was just and that makes things say. a lot a lot easier to communicate, mm -hmm. but they can't keep running over to each other and having conversations. Yeah. Uh, that'll really slow down the pace of the game. But uh, high school officials do not have whistles on the sideline referees. Here's a blast, and that one sails into the next field. Yeah, and that's pretty. That's that's standard for soccer. You your sideline referees never have a whistle. All they have is a flag to signal to the referee, and, the center referee, and just and, so and their job is just to. Their primary job is to catch off sides, and then their secondary job is to make sure they know who kicked the ball out of bounds or who the ball went out of bounds on so that they can. Looks like the Cardinal girls soccer players back from Loyola. I don't think Loyola has lights up there. Yeah, they must That's not. why they played earlier. Yeah, they typically play on that field right next to the football field, so no lights for them up there. Here's a blast, and that'll go past the goal. 27.09. As Seafried comes back in for the Cardinals. Max. Yeah, the Cardinal uh, team sophomore. with a sophomore. Good mixture. A lot players. of sophomores out here. Yeah. A smaller, smaller junior class, but a senior and sophomore heavy team. Six seniors on the team. Sanchez will take the free kick here. That one will sail past. Looks like a little dew on the ball there, Grant, as evening comes. Yeah, starts to get a little slick out here. I think uh, as an attacking player, you like that. Makes it a little tougher on the goalie. And the defense. Gives a little there. skip to it. And makes it easier to dribble with pace, especially with this nice, thick, well-kept grass out here. Right out front, a shot, and that one slides off to the side of the net. Gertis getting the work out here. No doubt. Oh man, see his parents down there. It'd be tough to be the parent of a goalie. I know that that is, that's a rough one, and they, they have to do it like you said, two seasons out of the year. But he's he's hung in there well. That's like the third or fourth diving save we've seen him make tonight. Twenty-five fifty-nine to go. And once again, we got in for the Cardinals, substitutes for both teams. Habnan back in for the Cardinals. Corner kick coming up here for. Liola. Line drive bullet on the ground. And we're going to have a whistle. We might have a penalty there kick. There will here. be the penalty kick, yep. So Gertis will have his hands full again here. Let's see who will. We'll take this kick. Zola's walking up to it, but a couple of his teammates are pointing at somebody else. I think they're saying, you've already got three, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Looks like number five, Armando Garcia. Yeah, Garcia was the one who drew the penalty there, so he's going to he's gonna say, you know what, guys? I think I'm going to take this one. They threw me to the ground. I'm, I took one for the team. Now I'm going to take yeah. this. So where's the ball placed here, Grant? It's uh, There's a hash mark. Uh, yeah, like a plus sign right out there, or a, a hash mark between the uh, the goalie's six yard box and the edge of the 18 yard box. It's 12 yards out, and uh, 
If you're if you're a goalie, it's just a guessing game here. There's uh, uh, yep, you, not a whole you, lot you can do. You just fake pick a direction one, and fake go. Fake one way and go the other way and hope for the best here as Garcia and Gertis match up here. And no time running off the clock here on the penalty kick. And that one finds the back of the net. 25-25, the year 25-25. Garcia. Garcia. Well, they got six on the scoreboard. We might have to confirm that goal then. Well, they, uh, they did not bring the ball back out to half field to set it up. So right, they, right. They declared it was there no goal. They made the call. Yeah, it's just, there, a, there just a scoreboard error here. Look at the replay on the penalty kick. On the no goal, we had a free kick right after that from the yeah. goal's mouth. Yeah, they started it down there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, should be five zip. <laughs> Call up the. Hey, the scorekeeper table over there and complain. Got a whole horde of people over there, and none of them realize the score is wrong. You would think. And there goes another ball through from Asa Zola. Crossing pass right out front and a couple of rebounds and look like Brolsma, 25. Picks I think up it was goal. actually Flake again, 26. Could be, could be 26, yeah. yeah. Second goal of the night for him, both off rebounds. Look at that play again here. Your Kaber's yeah, Realty. Great ball over the top. Susie Corsmo replay. First kick there, and then Gerardo, and it is 26. Nicholas Flake with his second goal. Now Loyola is going to bring Zola off the field. Say, you've done your work for the night. <laughs> he did. Setting up everything and scoring three of your own. 47, just seconds later. Paish back in. He'll come in for Zola. Well, the Crusaders, with three goals in the first half, have matched that here in the second half. Henniger. Ramiro Zamora, he's handled the ball well too. He splits traffic here. And then we're After not going to three let it. Three attempts at taking him down. Somebody finally did it. Somebody said. That was Malachi. Oh. I wasn't going to let him get through there. Malachi Anderson. Yeah, well done by Zamora to take it all the way down there. And he paid a price for it after outrunning the previous two uh, dangerous <laughs> challenges. Yep. Yep. So a free kick coming here. Better better than a penalty kick. Cardinals 0-2 on the season. Uh, Crusaders 0-2 on the season. And the Crusaders lead it here 6-0. Not 7 like the scoreboard. Free kick. And that's high up over the crossbar. Hey, some proud supporters of Cardinal Youth Coming Activities in Cardinals. include Six Fairmont Ford. Stop down and see Dave, Anderson. James, Paul, and that Smitherman guy. Also, Associate Autometry Lawn Solutions, Lawn Chiropractic, Hometown Sanitation, the Ranch Family Restaurant, Gemini Studios, the Visual Identity Vault, Peterson Anthony Insurance, Dan's Appliance, Duderstadt Video Productions, Lakeview Funeral Home, also Day Plumbing Heating, Century 21, Midwest Audio Video, Case IH, Johnny Uth out there at Rabe International, Fairmont Body Shop, Mr. Nuss down there, thanks a lot for sponsoring our video broadcast and our broadcast partner tonight, Graham Tire. Thanks a lot, Mr. Cohn, and once again, Gertis makes another stop. Four stops for Gertis in this half and half a dozen in the first half. He's a, bit, and a busy boy. Look at he that. has. 
Susie Corsmo, Cavers Realty replay. And hey, how about that second night in a row now we've seen a throw-in where the the throw-in taker lifted the foot. Why we were watching the replays. Explain that again, Grant. Yeah, so we talked about this last night. The uh, When you take a throw-in, you got to have the ball come from behind your head, directly over it, with two hands, and you got to have your feet on the ground when you throw it. And so the, uh, the throw-in taker just lifted their foot as they were taking it. It can give you a little extra leverage to throw the ball farther, but it's illegal, so... If you do that, the other team gets to take the throw in instead of you. So you just hand the ball away to the other team. Well, I thought that should have been a penalty shot for us. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to help at this yeah, point, right? Exactly. That kick out of bounds, that should be a penalty shot for Chirps, us. Sure, sure, right in the rules tonight. Yeah. What I like is this, Mike and Mike? Controversy and mayhem is good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cardinals trailing here, 21 19 and counting. Main damage coming from Zola. Matthias Zola. He's got a hat trick here tonight. And yeah, he's really been uh, uh, really the most impressive player on the field. I think it's been very clear. He's been pulling the strings for Mankato Loyola, dropping into midfield, picking up the ball, playing up front as a striker, and just playing out running people. And, and he on the ball tonight yeah. has just been really masterful. I mean, yep. he's put on some moves and he set up that uh, rebound goal in this half after a really, really slick cutback right through the legs. You know, Fabio Sanchez just he, twisted him up like a pretzel. <laughs> yeah, He could have had four goals too if not hitting that crossbar early yeah. on too where the goal was made after the deflection off the crossbar. Right, and so, I mean certainly he could have stepped up and taken the penalty kick as well, but yeah, yeah. by that point already had his three goals and he... Uh, yeah, he's getting a well-deserved rest. Little uh, little skirmish down there. Yeah. The ref's going to come over, break things up, say, calm down. You know, we, boys. Had, we had a great crowd last night for the girls' game, just as well tonight, too, Grant. Yeah. In the end. It's even a little bit bigger now than I think yeah. it was at the start. Yeah. But, yeah, that was quite a crowd last night. I'm not sure. I've seen that for a regular season game out here at Jeffrey Cat Fields. But it's definitely something you like to see. Free kick coming here. It'll be Abram Sanchez doing the honors here. No, I still think of soccer as being a relatively new sport around here. I was in sixth grade when they added soccer as a varsity sport through the high school. So what's that, 10, 11 years now it's been a varsity yeah, I high school that, sport? I believe this is the 12th season of soccer. 2006 12th already? 2006 <laughs> being the yeah. first. Yeah. So this is the, we're a couple weeks into season number 12. I think hockey came in the same time, didn't it? No, I think ho hockey had been earlier? around before that. I think uh, I, I always remember hockey as having been a varsity sport. I think it might have been okay. in the 90s that that one became a high school sport. So. And number 25, Derek Brosma. Heinrichs in for the uh, Crusaders, who lead it 6 0. 19 23 to go on the scoreboard. It's uh, it's great to see though the way that the fields out here have developed. You know, just yeah. so many additions over the years. You know, originally it was just a big old patch of grass with some lines yeah. and goals, and now yeah. you've got this permanent structure over here with the the concrete and the walking path over to this main field with the lights and, and no you've got a playground and you no, have those trees sprouting up right. over there as well. No irrigation those first few years, and now they have this field irrigated. None of the others, but <laughs> boy, in the last few years, the all the fields have been green. I'll never forget when they put the irrigation in out here on this field. There was two dry patches just running down the sides. We had to play a game on it, and there was just <laughs> big old dirt patches, beautiful green grass on one side of the field <laughs> yeah. and the other, and then just these two patches of dirt right down the middle. But you go through those things as you develop, and now this has turned into really yeah. quite a complex. And Gertis with another stop and then the hop and picked it up afterwards. Stopping another goal there. Sanchez goes down. I think he's looking for a red card there. <laughs> that one booted way ahead by Matthew Anderson. Habden giving chase. Let's get a goal. Knock that zero off the board here. Come on. And the whistle. Play. Going for it. A little too hard there. A little unnecessary Extra. tug on the arms. You know, I think uh, as a soccer player, if you're going to be somewhere, go. you got to <laughs> grab the whole body or something. You know, and just go for the arms. Can't use them anyway. Gotcha. Hey, some other proud supporters of the Cardinal Youth Activities include Johnson Barron's and Wilson's Law Firm, Midwest Audio Video. Stop and see Adam down there for all your audio video needs. And State Bank of Fairmont. 
Frontier Communications, Squeegee Brothers, Dior Electric, Jake's Pizza, U.S. Bank, State Farm Insurance, John Corsmo. Our first half replays brought to you by Mr. Corsmo. And don't forget about our broadcast partner tonight, Graham Tire. Thanks a lot, Davey. Stop down and see Malcolm, Brad, Dale for all your vehicle needs. Located right there on State Street. Good control there by Anderson to keep that one tight to his feet. Forced a little foul. 17.07 to go. And that one will slide off the sideline here. And absolutely nails a big old jug of water down there. That was an another good defensive move there by Zamora. He's been sharp. He is causing problems for Tom Havner. That's a good battle there. Yeah. Darren thinks that back in. Senior. Also show some love for your victorious Fairmont girls soccer team who's here in the stands right now. 16-40. PA guy getting into it as the girls soccer team return from Loyola victorious tonight, 8-3. Abby DeWitt with a hat trick in that. Higgins with a couple goals. Tyson Gertis out of the net, <laughs> and he forced that shot early. Yeah. Good forced play there. The, I think forced it on the weak foot as well. Saw yeah. the, the player had it on his left foot and was going to try and come back to his right. Just put the pressure on him early and Got make him that. take a much tougher shot, and you'll live with it. Got that one, Johnny. 16.04 to go. Your Susie Corsmo Cavers Realty replay coming up here. As Gertis makes a fine decision there. He come out right away. Forcing him. A good job once again of recognizing that the, the dribble had been played out way in front of himself. So he didn't have time. Put the to pressure on early and say, you know, yeah. if you're going to put it that far out, you're going to lose control. I'm going to come out and challenge you. Good recognition. 15 and a half to play. Cards trailing here. Taken away there by Roman Rosnov. And, and Ryan Heckman says, nope. <laughs> nope. Get, get this it. out of here. Get it out of the yeah. danger area. Yeah. Go ahead. Have your corner kick. Played that he, away. He believes me that the corner kicks are tougher, tougher than you realize. Yeah. Good deal. Pizza's on its way. And Pizza Ranch, one of the proud supporters of Cardinal Youth Activity. Yeah, I'm going to... Gonna have to, gonna have to ask uh, John to stave off to everybody from grabbing pizza down there. Or <laughs> uh, can you have Jay put it on his drone and have the pizza delivered up here? <laughs> Tie a piece to that drone and fly her up here. Beautiful night for soccer. That one knocked down by Thinkstad. Back to the corner kick. Personnel there and. Uh, Shot comes over the top of everybody. Mitchell plays that. Jacob Mitchell, also a senior. Up next for the Cardinals, they'll be back on the road to St. Peter. And then they'll be back home again Somebody Tuesday, September 5th here at Jeffrey Cott Soccer Tishana. Fields. And they'll host Southwest Minnesota Christian. Yeah, Southwest Minnesota Christian come all the way over from Edgerton. They always bring out athletic, competitive teams and big numbers. Yeah. Been a, a long-standing rivalry with them. That's a that's always a good series. I remember a long time ago when I was uh, here comes a boot point blank range. What a strike! You could see that nice assist set up there, and then Portillo one. just smacked that one in from distance. Jarley Portillo at the 1344 mark. Portillo makes it seven. Coach Jeffrey Cott always used to tell us if you hit the ball, if you hit the back corner post like that, he'd give you a Gatorade. Yeah. Here's a Gatorade for Harley Portillo. That is, that's a very, very nice finish. That was smoked. Had the pace and the finesse curled right into the corner. Cardinals going to have to try to play some keep away here. They trail 7-0. Your State Farm or your Hey, go way back. Thanks. Todd. Back to live back to live action here. 
There we go. I took a trip back to when it was light out. That's hard to make it. I think it's hard for that him to do. That was time travel right there. I think it's hard for him to do a replay with that Supreme in one hand. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, pizza in the other hand there. You know, if, yeah. if there's any distraction in this world, it's guaranteed it to work. It's pizza. As you see, Portillo hit that back post at the 1344 mark to make it 7 0. They still got eight, 8 up on the scoreboard. Gonna have to explain that. Here you go. Right down in front of the scorer's table. You see that water glistening off the ball there. The whistle stops play there. Uh, you look at our bench up here. We have some yeah. dew on the bench. Getting my paperwork wet. <laughs> Nothing from the the uh, volleyball yet. It'll be Zamora. Zamora taking the free kick here. His shot coming towards the goal. Gertis up there, sure hands it. Seventh stop. He's been a busy guy tonight. Yeah, this is one of those tough nights as a goalie where you can't be too upset with the way you've played, but then you look up at the scoreboard and it's hard not to be. You know, it's just forced to make a lot of saves. Yeah. Busy, a, busy. A collision here. <laughs> Stops. Play for the moment. And clock continues to run with 11.40 on it. The ref's having a little talk with the defender there from Mankiloyola from Portillo. You know, a lot of uh, sports, other sports have mercy rules. There's nothing in soccer though, right? No. Yeah, running clock. <laughs> running clock. Uh, yeah. Actually, they don't even have that because still after a goal, the clock still stops. Right. But yeah, yeah, it's funny in, in hockey when that hockey is, when that uh, gets started, seven, it goes quick. Was I mean, it the seventh goal in hockey? Yeah, yeah. Once you, or with six or more, six, six goal, yep. six or more. That third period clock will run, and then, then and it goes fast. I mean, 17 yeah. minutes is just 17 yeah. minutes flat. You know, I think it's 35 points in football. Then it's running clock there in the second half. <laughs> and uh, hey, he looks like a little Fon conversation the there Fon. between. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he looks like the Fonz. Or Ryan Henniger says, oh, "What do you? I didn't do anything." And the ref says, "Oh, I didn't do anything." Because this is right back at him, like, yeah. "Oh, you don't know what you did." Yeah, that's one of those. You get late in games as a referee, you get fo you call fouls that you know happen, and players look at you like that. Hard not to be a little bit cynical. Uh -huh. I've been in I've been in both of those <laughs> situations before. I, I've I've forced referees to do that, and I've been the referee doing that. As a player, you always want the goal. Gertis out of the goal and a slidey kick. Good play by Gertis. And then Sharp. hustling over there is Gherkin. And that'll go off the sideline there. Another good in, good instinct showing from Tyson Gertis tonight as to when to come out, when to challenge those things. Mm, it can yeah, be tough, though, when you does. make the save and your <laughs> yeah. defenders can't quite clear it. You know, like the ball pops up and you take out one of your defenders and all of a sudden it can be a little tougher to get rid of it. Opportunity here, Habnan out in front of everybody. Thomas Habnan, he lines up and where is it? It's wow. underneath, Colon. <laughs> Just disappeared between his legs. <laughs> well, uh, nice stop there by the goalkeeper. That might not be Colon here no, now. Yeah, I think, uh, I think he, after his injury, he stayed out and yeah. I think it's been well, the same. The, he just gave then. the goalkeeper his jersey then. Yeah. Because it's the same number yeah. one. That's what it is. Same goalkeeper kit usually. And Jeremiah Cullen was the starting goalie. And then they said uh, it was Joseph Cullen who made that stop. You got that one? Yeah. yeah. Johnny, are you eating pizza? <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore that you're eating pizza or not anymore? He's got it. You're... Cavers Realty, Susie Corsmo replay, Havnan with an opportunity here. And Cullen's just going to sit on this ball, and he catches it between the ankles behind him. <laughs> you can <laughs> see on his face, oh my goodness, I got it. There it is. There it is. Good job in the truck there. Pizza and all. Hoy trying to get it forward, and that one's going to be booted out of there. Caleb Hoy. Cardinals have not had many opportunities tonight with 8.35 to go. Crusaders up seven zip. Cardinal girls victorious in soccer tonight. And again, we see the foot lifted on the throw in. 
Just had it in the air gliding as he was taking the throw. So the cards will get the throw in. Up here to Matthew Anderson. Dribbled by Thinkstad there. That one intercepted there by Malachi Anderson. This will come back. And Thinkstad and Anderson looked at it for the moment and then Thinkstad went after it. He'll send it up ahead. Havnan was on sides, but it was played away. Mitchell has it taken away, and it's going to be a foot race here. There goes Zola once again. Uh, number eight on his way, and he gets it by. Uh, Curtis <laughs> again. He grabs the crossbar and goes down. <laughs> Once again, Gertis with a great play. And then Zamora, or Zola, after he missed the shot, went for the goal with the crossbar with his hands, and then he ended up on his backside. We'll see that again as Tyson Gertis, once again, makes the right decision, comes out of the goal. Keep it running, Johnny. Here's Caver's Realty, and Susie Korsma watches Zola. Oops. <laughs> Yes. Oh, a good uh -oh, save from right Gertis. Right out front, Gertis, and then coming in is Anderson. There's the help he wanted from his defender. Good job, Matthew Anderson. 6.45 to play. A lot of action here in the last few minutes, and it's all on the wrong end of the field, except for Havnan on the other end. Whistle will stop play here. Starting to see the fog rise over on the far <laughs> side of the field again. Yeah, we got done at what, around 9 o'clock last night? Mm -hmm. We had fog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, coming out of the swamp. Boy, Zola yeah. came back into the game, and he yeah. just yeah. makes a difference yeah. right away. He certainly did. In addition to all those, the dribbling and the passing that we were talking about and the shooting, he also looks like he might be one of the fastest players in the field, too, just flat out fast. And he can uh, dribble that ball well. And Fixed dribble it, it while he's running fast. That's yeah. no, that's a special skill. And Habden with the boot out of play. Whistle will stop play here. He's going to say Crusaders touched it with a hand. Yeah, we're going to get into uh, ace of spades here. Yeah, he says, ref says, no, 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 that's the other team's throwing. He doesn't like the call, so he throws the ball away. Maybe a little delay of game. That's a... Uh, one of those more cynical things that you see. He's gonna get Referees make those quick quick uh, calls when the players throw the ball away. And, and he's going to get sent off the field. Yeah, when uh, we learned, you know, when you be up in a tight game, kick that ball. When you're kicking it out of bounds, kick it as far away as you can. Uh -huh. and, you know, take some time. And if you're going to pick up a yellow card, the best time to do it is when you're trying to kill time with, you know, five minutes left to go in a game. That's uh, He's just a little frustrated with the call <laughs> there from the referee. <laughs> Yeah. 5.41 to go. Sanchez. And Zola again with it. He's got teammates running to his left and his right. He's looking to his left, looking to his left, looking to his left. <laughs> Pass Finds across. It. And that one taken away and booted out of there by Daniel Brumman. That one will go towards the goal, and it's going to go. Call that an ambitious line. strike. Yeah. little hopeful. Cardinal girls victorious tonight. 8-3 after leading 5-1 at the half. Abby DeWitt with a hat trick. Up next for Loyola. They'll be at Marshall. I wonder if they play on the turf at the Southwest Minnesota State. They do. They definitely do sometimes. I'm not sure if they get to play there, you know, permanently. But uh, this one sent ahead. Hoy ahead of everybody, and the Crusaders get back on defense. <laughs> Both Loyola players looking for a call there. Nothing called. As Habden goes down, that'll bring a whistle. Yeah, there's a. Free Some kick here. Sanchez will do the honors. Serious pushing and shoving going on between Tom Havden and Mankato Loyola's Ramiro Zamora. The Zamora's a bit in Havden's head right now. I think uh, <laughs> it's not often that Tom gets run down like this, and Zamora has just been so quick all night and in the right place and 
Tom got the better of him that time. Sanchez lines it up. His boot towards the goal. Out front, headed the wrong way. Habden will send it out. Anderson sends it across. Back to Anderson, and down goes Brumman. Yeah, that's going to be a free kick right out there from a good spot for Fairmont. Player came through and tried to kick the ball. Just kicked Brumman right in the shin. That could be pretty painful, even though you got those little plastic shin guards on. Now you're going to have all these Cardinals lining up over it. I'm going to take it. No, I'm going to take it. Well, Brumman was the one that was infracted on. See if he'll take it, or is Thinkstad going to take it? It's the <laughs> sophomore yeah. Daniel Brumman's not going to yeah. not going to plead his case here today. Yeah. Hoy and Thinkstad seven and two respectively. And Havnan looking at the ball, hand on yeah. his chin, rubbing it. Oh, no. How do I get this in the yeah. back of the net? Yeah. Hoy looks like Hoy is going to line up and take this one. Caleb Hoy, the sophomore, with the wall in front of him. They've got, a, car they've got a man in the wall. Sometimes yeah. you do this and aim right at that guy. A fake, and right up the middle, and Cullen, Joseph Cullen with another stop. Got that racked up. Three to play. Cardinals trail almost had their first goal there. Cullen has made two nice stops here. Your Kibbers Realty, Susie Corsmo replay coming up here. Now look a, like, looked like Hoy was going to take it. A well-executed free kick there. I think just one player needed to get a foot on it. Action on the other end, and as we're doing the replay, Gertis makes a stop, a point blank range. And what you saw in that free kick there was they lined up a, a Cardinal on the wall. I think it was Matthew Anderson, yeah, and they aimed right. right at him. He just ducks. Then, that creates a hole in the wall. You split it right through there, and the goalie can't see it. We saw that. Uh, I remember when that free kick became a part of the uh, the Cardinal playbook, it was... I was a freshman in high school, and we had a foreign exchange student come over from uh, the Czech Republic. Matej was his name, and yeah. he came in, and that's what he wanted him to do. He got, he would get one of the bigger players to line up in the wall, gotcha. and then he'd aim right at his head. Gotcha. And uh, when it works, man, it is a beautiful thing to see. So how many can be in that wall? There's no limit on how many players can be in that wall. It's just a, a, a distance away for, that they can for be. For either team? Either team, yeah. You can, you can line up as many guys as you want to. So you put up the wall... So, like that time they had mm -hmm. four Crusaders and then Matthew Anderson of the Cardinals mm -hmm. was in that wall and then the shot came and Matthew Anderson just stepped to the side and let it go be between the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you we know, would sometimes put a player in the wall too just as kind of a distraction because it really throws the defense off when you got a guy breaking up your wall. It's something that bothers the goalie because it's the goalie's duty to set up the wall, see how many players they want, where they want it. They go each post to post and look at their angles. Typically the, the role of a wall is you try and shift the wall over to one side to protect you on your either your left or your right and then as the goalkeeper you stay on the other side so that way you kind of have both your bases covered and then you know I mean it tends to happen sometimes when you have a pretty talented free kick taker to pop it over the wall get it down and, and in and that's I mean that's the most dangerous thing you can see but it's very very hard to complete that task especially from you know, about 20 yards out to get it up and down that quickly but uh, under a minute to play here 7-0 Crusaders on top Yeah, you see see the goalies yelling and pointing on free kicks, and that's what they're doing. They're trying to line up their wall, trying to get their angles right, trying to make sure that nothing's going to get by them. 35 seconds. Mitchell, nice play there to head it out. And it'll come here near side. With 22 seconds left on the clock. Scoring came early, and it was Nicholas Flake scoring off a Zola kick. An opportunity here for Hoy. Hoy and Havnan. Hoy out front. He lets fly top corner and up over the crossbar with two seconds left, and the time going to run out. Caleb Hoy with some excitement here at the end of the contest. That's the game. Boy, not, uh, Next game not exactly how they wanted to end that one. Had a chance for that first goal of the season and couldn't quite put it away. And a really, really impressive performance from Aloyo, especially from their star man, Mateo Sola, tonight. Just uh, an all-around well, great performance from him. Really sparked that victory. So it's Flake with a pair of goals. He gets one in the first half, 24-38. Then it's Zola with back-to-back -back goals, 23-48. And 7.09 left to go in 
the first half. And then Zola got the hat trick to open up the second half at the 29-13 mark. Then in the year 25-25, Garcia gets a go. Armando Garcia. Then it was Flake again at the 24-45 mark. And Portillo rounds out the scoring. Jarley Portillo, 13.44 to go. He gets the, uh, gets the other goal. So the Crusaders win it, 7-0. And they go to 1-2-0 on the season. The Cardinals fall to 0-3-0. And, and they're up next. On the road to St. Peter. Our next broadcast. Hey, we got the Pet Fest coming up tomorrow. And then join us for football Thursday night against the Blue Earth area. Hey, I want to thank all our proud supporters, our Cardinal activities, plus our broadcast partner tonight, Graham Tire. Thanks a lot, Dave Cohn and crew. Also, want to thank my broadcast partner tonight, Grant Becker. Thanks a lot, Grant. Yeah, good to be here. Will you be around for a while yet? We'll, uh, yeah, he'll do it for the foreseeable future here, the next couple weeks anyway. Awesome, awesome. Well, join us for football Thursday night. Also, want to thank our crew tonight, John, the tech guy in the truck, and our cameraman producer who's chowing down on some pizza. Good job, guys. Final score here from Jeffrey Cott Soccer Field. The Crusaders seven, the Cardinals zero. Has this been Chirp? Stay on the planet. <laughs>